Um, and before going into organization project mode, just go into um, <clears throat> how do we make this a safer space mode? Um, and I'm yeah, having trouble. When you say ahead. this, yeah. When you say this, I wonder if you mean this call or the mailing list or OGM or I mean the OGM space in general. Um, meaning probably mostly this call, but really so much of our activity happens on the OGM Google group. <clears throat> so I mean that as well. Um, and I mean, sort of all aspects of what is purportedly open global mind and has been well critiqued in the last couple of weeks, mostly on the mailing list as, hey, we're not exactly open, we're not exactly open minded, we're not exactly any of those things, and I would like us to be more so. And I think uh, a piece of that is the default settings on what constitutes controversy or nonsense on the part of left leaning uh, people. Gil, Gil's asking, how is it not safe <clears throat> on the chat? Eric is asking, how do I define safe? Those are excellent questions. Um, I think Gil, not safe means, uh, hey, I think X might actually be a fact worth considering <laughs> being dismissed by 80% of the participants in the room uh, means it's not safe to say, hey, I think X might be worth considering. And what happens then is there are side channels and there are people who ping each other and like, hey, what you said was great, but I'm not going to say that out in public. And it would be really, really nice if OGM were a space where we could say things in public and figure out how to catch them nicely and cleanly and put them someplace where we can inspect them more objectively than we have been. <clears throat> because there's sort of a um, OGM leans left, there's a, there's a progressive consensus-ish here, and I'm probably overstating that, I, but I'm not, I, I may be understating that. Um, but it's basically uh, the elephant in the room that we're not dealing with. And I think that any project we undertake to try to do some of this better needs to go hand in hand with more work, um, inner work on my part, together work on our part to do that, to make it so that we can um, so that we can do that. So Pete, please. Um, thanks, Jerry. I, I wanted to say real quick, not not safe. I, and I don't mean, I mean to quote that, I don't mean to other it. Um, not not safe, I think, is, a, uh, we, we have a, a our, the, our structures for communication um, invite essentially bullying behavior. Um, it's, it's easy for, hmm. for the loud people um, or the, whatever people to kind of end up being loud and then there's not you know that crowds out a lot of participation um uh so it's it's not just it's not just you know i i want to say i want to say something except i'm not going to because every time somebody else has said something similar you know it it's been shouted down or it's run over or whatever that happens but it's it's even deeper than that. Structurally, this call and the, the format and who we are skews a certain way. Um, the list is is even more skews faster and even more. And so there there are a lot of people we don't hear from, or a lot of people who don't come uh, to one space or the other space um, because it it's not not safe you know and in, in in kind of a, a large meaning of that not just i can't you know i can't say something without being taken seriously um i apologize for taking up so much time i mostly want to hear from grace today um two symptoms of not safe are someone holds back saying something they would normally put in the conversation because it doesn't feel safe to do so <clears throat> and also lots of side channels because saying something doesn't feel safe in the middle of the room somewhere so those are those are i think what happens when when a place doesn't feel as safe as it might um grace the floor is open to you anytime you'd like to jump in i'm not going to shine the spotlight on you um i'm happy you're here and i'm concerned 
about your concerns. So I want to try to solve them or at least address them very seriously in what we're doing here. Otherwise, we're, um, as Rob and Charles and others are pointing out, otherwise we are OGM in initials only. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you just fine. Good. So just so you know, I'm driving. I have a little bit of a lost cat issue. I had to pick up one of those cages where you trap your, I got a new cat. It's like a whole big, uh, I don't consider it very tragic, but my daughter's having a fit about it. So I probably should have not told her. Anyway, um, uh, so I'm just on my way home. So I am driving and not showing myself. I've actually just gotten home, which means um, I'm going to speak from the car simply because uh, I use wood heat and nobody has heated the house all day. Um, so I'm going to at least the first part do from the car. So one thing I want to say is, and so it's not that I'm not showing myself because of anything that happened. It's because, you know, it's just not something I do while I'm driving. Mm -hmm. And it's quite dark here. So even if I turn on my video, you would just see darkness. So the, it's not just not, we just lost you. Because <clears throat> Grace, I'm sorry. Can you rewind 30 seconds? Oh, Grace, Grace, the, the gremlins in the internet that hear very carefully. Okay, sorry, I must jump to my head. The, the gremlins that that pay attention when somebody's about to say something important and then intervene just did so. So maybe if you want to get yourself to a more stable um, net connection, we will hear you more clearly. No, no, I just uh, is this better? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, my my phone was deciding whether it wants to be on my Wi-Fi or on the uh, or on the um, on the mobile. So it's not just so it, I can kind of be with any communication you know, and say what I have to say. Now, I've held back on saying certain things for quite a long time, not because I was so afraid of what people would say, but because I'm going to call it, there wasn't a listening for it, right? I could say the things, I wasn't afraid I would be get kicked out or bullied because you can't physically bully me and you can say whatever you want to say to me. It's not going to physically hurt me, it might distract me or upset me for a temporary period of time. Um, but I'm, I'm not, I mean, you know, like I'm sensitive, but I'm not sensitive in that way. Um, I adhere to sticks and stones can break my bones and, you know, names will never hurt me kind of philosophy about things. But um, it's just not interesting, right? If it becomes a place where we're just confirming one another's bias, then it stops being interesting. It's not just that it stops being safe. And so if, let's say I saw, I saw some evidence of something that is not in the mainstream US media and particularly not in the left-leaning mainstream US media that I think is interesting. And that could be about Twitter or it could be about COVID which are the two hot topics right now. And I bring it up here, I have a pretty good chance that it'll be written off. And then the conversation doesn't get very interesting. Right, so there's like this, um, so I'll say something about, you know, the Twitter conversation I'll talk about a little bit because that wasn't, this was all in the background of the COVID conversation, but on the Twitter conversation, there was this thing like the Twitter files and some people were saying, you know, some people are very, uh, you know, it's horrible that Elon Musk is taking over. And then some people are saying, well, what about this report? And somebody says that reporter is a jerk or whatever it is, right? Like it's, I'm, I'm making it more extreme, right? And there's a lot of that instead of saying, huh, that's interesting that this reporter said that. There's an immediate defense of the position and saying that reporter has been paid off in the past, right? And again, I'm giving this as an example of sort of how the conversation goes that rather than saying, huh, I'd never thought about that. Let me look further. There's kind of a yeah, but why are you relying on that source? And so there's a tendency in the group, rather, I would say there's kind of two directions it goes, like it's, that are just uninteresting rather than unsafe. One is, if I don't agree with your opinion, I'm going to change the, you know, I'm going to criticize your sources, or I'm going to criticize your opinion, or I'm going to argue my side. And the other one is, 
if you say something that is not in a realm that I'm interested in, because my project is about something else, you know, I'll clap you and wiggle my fingers and change, you know, talked about what I want to talk about. But I feel like there hasn't been really in this group a feeling of going deeper into anything, because it's just like everybody kind of says their opinion. And there isn't like, huh, that's something to consider more than on an intellectual yeah, and 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 Gila, and it's not just humans, right? There's something I my sense is that it's gotten more like that in the United States than in Europe. And nobody ever says, and that's another thing people don't say, like, huh, Grace is in Europe. She's looking at different media. That's so interesting. She's seeing a different cultural trend. It's like, oh, she's a bit whacked out and isn't getting the truth or something, you know. And so like my sense is like my opinion is not very interesting to anybody. And if I hear something interesting from you guys, like Pete put out some stuff that I thought was pretty interesting. I'm like, oh, that's really interesting about how the virus spreads. I'd never seen anything about it. If I was particularly interested in that, that opens up a gate to something that I had never really thought about. Wow, you know, it's spreading in the water and stuff like that. I didn't know, wow, that's interesting. Um, and so it's like, we are all looking at different pieces of the media. And I too, it's not often enough I hear people go, huh, that makes me wonder. And so the conversation gets stale. So not it's not just about unsafe. There is that thing, like, you know, like I was, you know, basically accused of being a COVID denier on the list. And I'm like, that, it's not that, it's not like an accusation. It was like, there's such a closed mindedness that having a nuanced position put me on that, like, oh, maybe I'm a Trump supporter list. And I'm like, okay, wow, that was a big jump. And my family did that jump during COVID, during COVID, because I, I'm, I'm somebody who has not gotten the COVID vaccination because I'm concerned about side effects. I worked in the pharmaceutical industry early in my career. I saw the ways in which they hid evidence and I didn't trust them. And I have all the other vaccines, right? Like I have, you know, yellow fever vaccine, tetanus vaccines. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I've worked in the pharmaceutical industry. And when it got rushed to, to the market, I just was like, oh, yeah, I'm not touching anything. The pharma companies rushed to the market. Not, you know, nothing to do with COVID at all. It had to do with my lack of trust of the pharma companies. And the fact that I got labeled almost as like in my family as a, as a Trump right wing supporter, it was, I thought it was hysterical because my mom worked for the pharma companies her whole life too. I was like, what are you talking about? Just yesterday, you didn't trust these guys. And so, and, and so there's, I wouldn't say the behavior is as extreme on the OMGM, but for me, it's shown up that way. It's shown up like, you know, Grace is just a little bit off the wall and um, not interesting. I'm going to add to that one other thing that makes me feel not interesting, which is I've gone to a lot of other stuff here. I've gone to the flotilla and I've gone to the Lionsburg and I've gone to the um, Society 2020, 2045. And, I, you know, I've participated in, in the mapping thing and the, I've checked out a lot of your stuff. And only one person in the OGM greater community has ever signed up for my workshop. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I'm really a bizarro, crazy person and people aren't interested in what I have to say. Like, what am I doing here? And so again, it's not, I don't wanna say it's unsafe. I mean, most people would find it unsafe because they're just not as tough as I am. Um, so I, I think that that's a, that's a proper way of saying it but kind of feeling, <laughs> thank you, Gil. Um, and I haven't been keeping up with the chat because I'm on my mobile, but yeah, I'm just gonna kind of wrap it there and kind of get myself together and go inside and sort of have people respond to that. It'll probably take me maybe about 10, 10, five to 10 minutes before I can respond again. So, um, you know, talk about me in front of my face behind my back. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Grace. Um, let me go straight to Judy. I was just going to observe that, that there's something rich in what Grace just said, because I think she's right that we don't ask as many questions as we could. The, the initial response to an individual is, as she says, someone either says, I agree in this or I disagree in this, um, more the former than the latter, but we get into the didactic. 
but hardly ever does someone say, can you say more about that? Can you explain more deeply this dimension of it? And I think that in terms of effective communication and responsive and responsible communication, it's almost like I feel that, that I have an imperative to continue to ask questions, to better understand the other's point of view before stating mine. And it, it usually is helpful. Um, it helps dial down any tensions if they're there because people often expect to be challenged, I think. And it's something we might want to consider as a, some, just something to think about. <laughs> I'll stop there. Thanks, Judy. Uh, Gil? Yeah, um, uh, Grace, I don't know if you're still listening, but thank you very much for what you've raised and the way you framed it. A um, couple of thoughts. Uh, one is that our, our listening, I don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean our OGM, our listening humans um, commonly is listening for how what someone said fits into what I'm already thinking. You say something, immediately I agree or disagree, as opposed to, as you know, Grace and you're saying, that's interesting. What does that provoke for me? Uh, why is it, you know, why is it that you've said that? Um, maybe I'm surprised that given what I know of you, what you said is uncharacteristic. I'm curious about that as opposed to immediately snapping into, you know, taking, you know, taking it against my checklist in my being and saying, okay, I now know what that is before even listening very much. That's number one. Um, number two, we seem to have an expectation here for a kind of depth and intimacy of conversation that usually happens with two or three or four people. And we're trying to do it with 15 or 20. Uh, and I think that's structurally just a very difficult expectation to fulfill. Um, uh, and third, I'm perplexed, puzzled, unsettled uh, by what maybe is a conflation of safety and disagreement. Um, I value disagreement. I like tussle and, con you know, challenge in conversations. I'm also out of the sticks and stones school, Grace. So I don't, you know, I don't mind uh, conversations which people disagree with each other. And there seems to be a, a mood in the emerging in the culture now that safety means don't challenge me, don't provoke me, don't disagree with me. And I'm not drawn that way. I'm drawn toward let's mix it up. But in a way that you know, yes, that 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 brings something new into the conversation, as opposed to just battle, you know, wrestle, you know, a, you know, the, 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 a fist fight between two ideas, but something that actually has something new emerge. That's it for now. Thanks, Gil, uh, Stuart, and Judy. Do you want to put your hand down from earlier? Thank you. Yeah, quickly. Um, take a look at the demographic on the screen. It's clearly got something to do with our gender. <laughs> there's, there's no question about it, okay? There's a little bit of mine is bigger than yours uh, going on here. Because we're all a bunch of guys. Just, just think about that, okay? You're, you're discounting the women on the call. That, that feels really... To say we're well, all a I'm, bunch of guys. I mean, come yeah. on, there's women on this call. We're we're not all a bunch of guys. There are three women on this call, and you yeah. know, take a take a look at the screen, Ken. I, I can't I, disagree I, with I, you there. I'm just saying I to say we're all a bunch I of guys discounts okay. the women on the call. Right. Uh, I, I'm I'm sorry, I slightly misspoke. Okay. We are <clears throat> 90, 80, 80 to 90 percent guys on the call, <laughs> and that's got something to do with it. And I'm curious about, you know, um, what the women might say uh, to what I just raised. <laughs> I'll jump in just because I've been living with men so long that I don't consider myself different. And <clears throat> I just, and, um, but that might not be a, a, a typical response. Um, I'm just interested in people who express their ideas well and are willing to have a dialogue about them. And that's why this group feeds me. And we seem to be feeding some of that, but not enough of that. 
and and I will add that I don't think that I'm Joe Rogan or any of the macho or mine is bigger than yours kind of moderators, and I try not to moderate ever in that fashion. But I will say that Pete and, Pete and my chasing after fat. My cat, is, my cat, my cat! It came, it came back! It came back! Oh Sorry, no way! To say that. <laughs> you have cat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I found it. Oh, fabulous! Fantastic! Congratulations! Good news on the call. I love it. Thanks for sharing it. <clears throat> um, cool. Cat is found in the chat. I love it. Um, Doug, please. Okay. Um, to me, my, my thinking is that we have mixed instructions here as to what we're doing. So the idea of a go around is we hear everybody's voice. We don't follow up on what anybody says because that would break the chain of getting everybody's voice in the conversation. Uh, so when Grace speaks, for example, uh, I'm often quite fascinated with where that might go, but to make that the chain would be to break the logic of uh, the go around. Uh, so I just find mixed signals as to what we're actually doing structurally. Uh, I like the idea of a go around and we normally don't actually do it very well. Uh, just getting everybody's voice in the conversation and then seeing where the conversation might want to go. Anyway, that's my thought. Um, thanks, Doug. And a, a thing just quickly on that, which is uh, this is not a check-in call and we are usually pretty explicit about the check-in. And I'm usually pretty explicit that my MO on the check-in is not, I apologize to the people we don't make it through, <clears throat> but I intentionally stop and say, tell me more to people on the check-in because I want to open up and figure out what they meant or what they said or isn't this, you know, whatever, or make connections. I'm very intentionally trying to slow it down and do that, um, which I think think adds value, but I know distresses you, Doug, because we don't make it through hearing from everybody often on the calls. And we, we weirdly have ended up at this like 16 size-ish most of the time. We don't, I don't remember any or many OGM calls where I had to worry about two screens in, uh, in Zoom, for example. We don't ever get that big. Um, and, and so, and so I think we're also uh, slightly under mixed uh, signals in the normal calls where we're trying to do discussion together because it's unclear whether this is a salon conversation where we're enjoying each other's presence and we're mixing stuff up to maybe go talk later or a workshop where we're trying to get work done like sense doing and go deeper and slow things down and sort of annotate, tabulate, compare. Uh, and build some models that might actually be useful outside of this conversation and. I don't direct us much into workshop mode. Um, Mark, I'm going to mute you because I think that sound is coming from your uh, your mic. Um, and so, um, and so, I, I I don't know. I'd love to hear whether uh, a check in with no moderation at all, just uh, people jumping in a queue and going. We tried at one point to use a a Google Doc or something to figure out people putting themselves in the queue. Uh, for check-ins, that didn't really work. It was clumsy. Uh, that was hard. Um, but you know, certainly open to alternate methods. But that's a, I think that's a side conversation to the 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 topic misnamed as safety here. Um, uh, Grace, I want to go back. If in, I'm, I'm hoping that now that Habemus um, Felix Felix uh, has happened, um, that. One of my frustrations with OGM calls is that we don't very often slow things down and that very few of us are using tools to try to model what it is we're saying. Because I'm extremely interested, one of my passions is having an artifact besides an evanescent conversation on a mail list or in a chat like this, uh, a, a physical conversation like this, having sort of a longer lasting, durable uh, artifacts that come out of it that get better over time that we are sort of curating and crafting uh, ways of understanding more deeply what it is we're saying. And uh, that's an eternal frustration for me. <clears throat> well, I think, uh, I mean, I think that this is kind of a perfect crisis, right? It, it's like, here we are winding down at the end of the year um, we've, and we're winding down kind of a an era of time 
in terms of our lives have gotten back to as normal as they're maybe going to get in this uh, decade. And, um, and, and we're saying, okay, we've been meeting online for this amount of time. And we've gotten to a point in our relationship where maybe we want more. And I'm kind of stirring up the pot. I'm like, hey, let me try something here. Let me stir up the pot, which I did two weeks ago. And then I did on the mailing list and see where it wants to go. And I think Rob, I can't remember, was one of the guys is like, okay, where's it going? What's going to happen in 2023? And so the question of what type of, like, should we have different kinds of go arounds is inside of what are we doing here? And it was interesting, the Society 2045 conversation on that. And, and this has been kind of my, where I'm, I'm starting to reduce the number of groups I'm a, a part of um, and form larger groups, be more, more interested in, in, in convergence, right? Rather than ex like, there's a lot of experimentation, but maybe bigger experiments or experimenting more together and going deeper, right? So there's different places, you, like there's a base level of relatedness here. And then it's like, okay, well, does that go somewhere or not? And and I'm not the only one asking that question. So I think that that's, you know, so that then there's, there has been enough safety in this group to have pleasant conversations, check-ins, getting to know one another's things, cover some topics that aren't too close to our hearts, avoid the topics that are too divisive. That's the level of relationship that we're at, we've been so far. And so those two conversations go together. Okay, what's the next level of something we might want to be doing or creating with these calls? And then what's the level of relatedness for that? Um, I just led a call yesterday for a group inside of one of the crypto groups that I, that I work with, who they got a lot of funding for a bunch of tiny little projects this year, which are unrelated to each other. And they're like, okay, well, we got to bring it together for next year. And that means some people are going to be out and some people are going to be in and some people are going to make sacrifices and some people are going to have to go deeper into their motivations and we're going to have to criticize each other and say, hey, that project really was kind of stupid. And I mean, I don't think anybody will use those phrases, but we last year, none of the people in that group had the depth of relationship to tell somebody else, I think your project's a little stupid and doesn't do anything and there's no profit mo model or there's no real growth there or whatever it is, right? And now we, after a year, this group has gotten to the point where they can say that to one another, hey, maybe we should do that. And so I think there's like, it's a bigger conversation, right? It's, you know, if we're gonna get more safe and more intimate, they're also, for what purpose, right? And to me, it's kind of about, well, I'd like the conversation to go deeper and get more interesting. And I'd like us to, and Jerry's like, I'd like us to produce something um, and I have a, we all have a list of things that are like, well, why aren't we, and I'm sure we all have one or two things that we're like, I wish we were doing this. Um, yeah. So there's kind of like, where, where does this go and how does it get safer? And by the way, in terms of men and women, of course, you know, my response to that was duh. And, um, <laughs> I started with, started forming a big women's group now. And everybody I've asked has said I'm in because women are sensing that coming into a men's group and trying to change the ethos and the way it operates and the, the way the conversation goes and the way collaboration happens and the way acceptance happens is an uphill battle. But if we created a parallel group, then there would be a moment at which we could say, okay, we're ready to join together with the men's groups and then bring in what whatever it is that we bring in. Um, so there's been, and it's been, we have an uh, organizing committee, which is seven people like organizing and the entire flow of the conversations of the work meetings is so much different than anything else that I'm involved in. It's, I can't, and it's very effective. We always come out with decisions and everything done we wanted to do, but the flow of the conversation, if you listen to it, it would sound really inefficient to you. So yeah, that's complete for now, for this round. I'm gonna light a fire now. Thanks, Grace. Don't light a fire with the cat. <laughs> what is the cat's no, no, name? No, the cat's indoors. What is the cat's, the cat's name? Cat's, the cat's name is Karma. Karma, well, isn't that significant? I like it. <laughs> 
Um, well, none of you are probably Taylor Swift fans, but my daughter is, and she's in charge of cat naming in my household, even though she doesn't live in my household. She's still in charge of cats. Like, it's her little sister, so she gets to give the name. That's well, just how it goes. Thank you. Mr. Carranza, then Matthew. Um, thank you, Faith. Um, I appreciate listening to you. Um, I also have my own interests. Rob O'Keefe mentioned self-tagging. And I am here because I believe that minds can be and I'd like to derail the conversation to ask Rob about self-tagging. What do you mean by self-tagging? What's your what's your if you can give a short proceed about what that means to you. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, uh, appreciate it. Um, I, I'm not a fan of mailing lists. I, that's fine that other people are. I just, I spend a lot of my work day in, in email. And to me, it feels more like to-do list. And the same token, I've gotten tons of information and tons of links and tons of good good things out of this mailing list. So I'm not trying to say it's not not good, but it feels like a to-do list to go through the emails. And, you know, sometimes you can tell from the link what it is, sometimes you can't. And so to me, self-tagging would be, hey, this is on, you know, uh, social justice and the environment. And the key point is X. I'd love to hear from other people, you, you know, is, is it FYI or is it I'd love to hear discussion, and I don't know what those tags would be, but it, the tagging would be to save the consumers of the emails some time and understanding why was this shared to the group, um, and and th that's my thought on the self tagging, and then and then knowing which ones to invest. My, I mean, we all have the limited time, right? That's our that is our that is our one precious resource. That's why we're all here. Um, and and I've talked to Jerry about this before that I typically have work meetings at this time, 11, 11 Eastern. So I'm not often on these calls. Um, I, I canceled some meetings to be here today because it's a topic that I that I'm that I'm interested in the in the sense doing. Um, so I think I think that hit it, Mark, but I appreciate you asking. Thank you very much, Rob. I'm very interested in the nature of personal sense making as well as community sense making, as well as kind of political group sense making, as well as certainly global sense making. Um, I appreciate your answering the question. And now um, I hope uh, we can continue with the theme of this talk. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Um, Rob, briefly to paraphrase you to see if I got it right. I think you're asking, could each of us add more value to whatever we're posting about? So it's not just, hey, here's a, here's a cool link. This was great. Please read it. Yeah. But rather, <clears throat> but rather, here's what it's about. Here's what we might do with it or whatever else. Um, yeah, a nugget, I, a nugget of context. Right. And and I, I, I agree. Um, and it relates to a bunch of other stuff as well. Let's go, um, Matthew, then John, then I want to steer us back toward uh, sense doing and see where we are with that and see if we can't spend uh, the rest of our call on that or if it's too early to do so. Matthew. I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, I haven't turned up to many of these meetings and there's two reasons for that. Uh, I first got introduced to this um, a, a few months ago and uh, I'm so glad to hear I'm not the only person who's still wondering what it's for. Um, that makes me feel a lot better because I was like, this is really cool. There's so many interesting people and there's all these links and email and there's also a Google group and there's also Mattermost and this is great and a lot of talking. Uh, but then I wasn't sure what it was for. And um, I'm one of the people Jerry was talking about when he said some folks have met here and gone off to do projects. And that's what I want to do is I want to like do something and build something. And if we want to just determine what is safe, we need to determine, well, what are we here for? And I think that that model, which I discussed with Jerry when he was um, in Europe, uh, still via Zoom, but the idea where OGM brings people together to talk and come up with ideas, and then it spawns projects and they go off and do it, but then they report back. And as I mentioned in email, hopefully there's more news about the project that Peter and Bill and I have been working on, which was spawned by 
FOTL actually, but similar to this, um, you know, next month. Um, but there should be sort of, there should be a process by which projects are formed, they're spawned, they go off, they do things and they report back. These are the interesting things we discovered and bring them back to the group, like a, like a, a mothership or something like that. So that was just, that works for me, um, but I'm just throwing it in the group to see whether anybody else liked it. Um, thanks, Matthew. I think what you just said would resonate strongly with Pete. Um, jazz hands if yes or no, because it feels like what you've been describing a lot. <clears throat> um, uh, John? Yes, thank you. Can you, am I coming through okay? Very clearly. Great. All right, so uh, tagging self and other. Uh, there's a lot of history here. Uh, there was a process I worked on in the 70s. I wrote the, I wrote the instructor guide for something called information mapping which was uh, Bob Horn's you know, use of advanced organizers and labeling and a whole bunch of other stuff which you don't need to go into. Uh, the more interesting and relevant to this group is um, we found in tagging experiments that uh, it was a skill and it was also an effort. In other words, that casual tagging came easily to a lot of people, but really useful tagging required quite a bit of discipline, uh, not unlike an editor. And, but it also introduced biases, you know, but, but I mean, self-tagging has biases. I mean, there's biases all over the place. So it's just, it's not a question of being completely objective or unbiased. It's a question of what's your mechanism for managing that? So uh, one that, that I tried in a little semi-private experiment was uh, to, look at look at some of the OGM chat and see well how would you how could this be tagged and uh where I got ahead of myself was um not checking in with the authors about the tags putting putting on their statements checking in with them privately see and and that I think is a potential model there are by the way there's a whole body of knowledge about tagging about what kinds of tags to use and also there's some meta knowledge that is up above the individual statements and links which is what's the ongoing conversation you know within OGM and does that how does this relate to that ongoing conversation so there's a whole body of of work here uh I'll just suggest as in terms of um observations that to do it well requires uh, dedication and skill. Um, if we are going to do it, you certainly welcome self-tagging. Uh, consider expert tagging. But if you expert tag somebody, you need to give them the right to review the tags and appeal. Say, no, 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 that doesn't get it. I, I, what I was trying to say was something like this. And either change the tag or add a new add a new comment that does a better job of expressing what the uh, author really wanted to say. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you. And and in that interesting way that conversations sometimes do, you've just tipped us right back towards sense doing because what you're describing is also what Idea Loom does, at a much deeper semantically aware, like like Marc Antoine Parent is world class uh, in understanding how to structure arguments and how to compare them and all those kinds of things. And that's what Idealum is trying to do. And it's complicated and it takes work. And there's a small posse of people who volunteered to sort of learn about it and try to sort of jump into that, which I'm excited about. Uh, so it feels like we might be on a path to uh, do some of that, uh, at least the little focal point of information that's floated past us on the retreat list, uh, sorry, on the, on the OGM list or something else like that. Um, Rob? Uh, just to clarify, I probably shouldn't have said self tagging, although I think people got got the gist. Um, so I'm probably thinking more of self contexting, uh, really just a, a phrase, a this is why I'm posting it. I think tagging, you know, tagging opens a whole can of worms that I wasn't particularly trying to get to. I totally agree. And uh, tagging is maybe too lightweight a word for the thing we're intending in some sense. Um, but, it, but it was working because it was lighting up the right neurons, I think, for a lot of us. Um, okay. Can we talk about sense doing? Is that, uh, are we, are we, um, enough there to figure out what that is? 
Okay. I, I am not. Then Pete, please tell me what we need to talk about before we start heading back there. Um, it's, it's an interesting conundrum uh, because through a confluence of, you know, confluence of happenstances over the past week or week and a half or something like that, um, I, I feel like we sparked a lot of, a lot of interest and um, focus on actually getting something done. Um, uh, it turned out when we started describing self, you know, what what Jerry and and I and maybe Flancy and kind of, you know, we put under the heading of sense doing, and I think it's a good heading. Um, uh, we came, this community came up with the word sense doing earlier this year, and then and then has since forgotten about it. But it makes sense to kind of come back under it anyway. In describing ourselves uh, to ourselves, you know, oh yeah, I would be interested in that. Um, and, and here's a sibling community that, you know, I would love to, you know, that my, you know, a community that I'm in, that's not part of the conversation here, would love to be doing that too. We got a lot of that in a very short amount of time. So I think it's a really rich topic. Um, uh, I, I encourage folks to go check out the Mattermost channel, um, uh, or, or tell me or Jerry why you would not check out a Mattermost channel, um, our, our hypothesis is that Mattermost and uh, Wiki curated by Wiki people um, is a good combination and a good replacement for the mechanics of an email list. Um, I, I was looking forward to talking about it today. I feel kind of like there's a bigger elephant in the room. Like, you know, what, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Should we do it together? Um, I'm reminded of Scott's I, the, one of the things Scott said last week has stayed with me, um, and it was a, a gift. Um, I'm not leaving. Um, I'm not leaving is what you say to your spouse um, or your partner, um, and that's what that's the pivot around which the things that happen inevitably to a partnership through throughout life. That's the pivot around which you you stick together through thick and thin. I. So I, I would, I feel my heart doesn't really want to talk about sense doing today until I feel like we're, we've at least had a little bit more time to think, think through why we're here, what we're doing together. And, you know, and it's kind of ironic because it's like right at the time when we're like fighting about what is this thing and why are we doing it and why can't we accomplish any damn thing sense doing pops up and it's like oh my god we could actually do something together and oh my god it turns out that sense doing um bentley made a great list of something that i said somewhere else which is there's like three or four reasons people might be interested in sense doing um and you want to kind of like make sure that you know that, that we're not talking maybe you're interested in sense doing a topic Maybe you're interested in the idea of sense doing in general and you want to help other people do it and you don't care about what topic it is, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I'm not super interested in talking about sense doing right now, even though I kind of just did for a while. Um, while I've got the floor, the other thing, I, we, we are in this constant tension about what is OGM and why can't we just figure out what we're doing? Um, to me, I said it in the chat, to me, OGM is a, an attractor. And, and it's wonderful at that. It brings people together who, who wouldn't have touched each other other ways. And, um, and like Matthew said, um, and like I've said a number of times, a, a, a process that does work is to spin out projects and get stuff done, uh, like the Tools for Thinking map that Matthew and I are working on, or interestingly enough, the Fellowship of the Link group, which is where TFT map spun out of Fellowship of the Link thinks it's a sub of OGM. So Matthew and I and Bill Anderson participate in a sub project of a sub project of o OGM, and we're getting a lot of stuff done, and it's amazing. And you know, hopefully, you know, in January we'll come back to OGM and say, here's what we've been doing. That that pattern works really well for me, um, and I I feel the frustration of why can't OGM get anything done, but 
we are getting stuff done. It's just not in this call and not on the list. And I'm not sure that this call or the list is ever going to be a place to get something done. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. And I'm I'm feeling your tension or discomfort with not wanting to talk specifics about a project before getting through this piece that we're in right now as well. And I was kind of trying to see if we could gently steer toward the doing, but um, Grace. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it is interesting, right? Like here we are talking about doing when I've been pointing out, you guys aren't even making any sense. You're gonna give sense doing? You're not doing sense making. But I think like, in I, I think possibly in the trying to do it will allow us to say, hey, this do is not encompassing, is not holding like the people whose opinions matter. I mean, or, or, sorry, or sorry, other sorry opinions. Deal. Um, yeah. So can I hold your feet to the fire just for a second? Please. I, this, Shakespeare uh, so, in Love is one of my favorite movies. So go ahead. This this came, you know, th th this came out in the thread, right? when you did something which was get a number of vaccines and boosters and still got sick it didn't cause you to pause and wonder or at least not publicly you were like i'm pretty sure that this really helped me not end up hospitalized that's right. how it occurred to me right it occurred I... to me and so now i'm wondering you're going to go to sense doing in a world in which in my perception okay this is not the truth Okay. That even when the reality gives you feedback, I don't know how much research you went back and did. Grace, right? I had Grace, I had no expectation that being fully vaccinated made me immune to catching COVID. None whatsoever. That was not in my head. I was like, I need, I need to keep out of it. But I did have an assumption that if I caught it, I'm probably my odds of being hospitalized and needing life support and a, a, like a rebreather or whatever were very low. That's all. I had I, I don't know I don't know why you're assuming that I thought I was immune like I had a shield like a magic shield against catching COVID. No such no such thought ever entered my head. Okay, cool. And and I don't think so, I've ever articulated anything like that. Okay, uh, that's fine. I'm just like because I'm like you know I'm sort of pointing out that there's this like there's some gap in how we're even making sense in the group. And here I am. I jump to conclusions about you. You jump to conclusions about me. We're jumping to conclusions and not finishing or com completing our conversations. This is a perfect example of right you and me not understanding each other, not getting the full picture of what's going on, and then we're going to go to sense doing. And I feel like we're not at the 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 level of communication in the group that as a group doing sense doing won't make sense. The other concern that I have is the level of individual projects and the number of individual projects. And, and um, Pete is very excited and happy about this. And so are some other people, like we would do little projects and come back and report on them. I personally don't have an interest in that. I really think that we've gotten to a point where I personally wanna do larger projects and do things together more. And that's my personal preference, but yeah, like I'm kind of like, I don't know, are we going to sense do or is it just going to break off into a whole bunch of little projects and seem like we're all doing little things, but it's not converging to anywhere. Um, briefly, Grace, and this might be helpful here. In 1990, I think I was at New Science Associates and I had to write a white paper about a speech I'd been giving a whole bunch. And I only realized in writing the white paper that a bunch of illustrative diagrams I'd been using the axes were backwards and didn't logically work because when I tried to put it down into words, it actually didn't didn't pencil out. It didn't it didn't actually work. And I I actually think we've been sitting here saloning for three years almost, um, and doing I think a reasonable job of that, and not slowing the conversation down effectively, and not creating tools or products or anything like that. And I have a feeling that if we slowed down to do that and looked at something we said, like like. Part of the, the goal for, for um, using Marc Antoine's uh, tools is to slow down and look at little stretch on the mailing list and see if we can't deconstruct that and, and, and so enter it deeply. That might take us into that territory. No guarantees, Grace, but I have a feeling that trying some of those things is go actually going to be helpful to the problem that you just described that I'm also sensing. Mm. Um, and, and we'll miss each other less often. Um, and yeah. I'm really open to experiments where each of us has a button or a knob or a dashboard that says disagree, agree, disagree. Like what if we all had people meters uh, during a conversation and we could see that, wow, 
five people just spiked out of the crowd disagreeing with something we didn't notice because they weren't jazz handsing down, right? Because this is meant to be a pressure release valve for people who disagree with the statement. We're not even doing this <laughs> when somebody when somebody says something that we actually disagree with. We don't feel somehow maybe safe enough to do that. And that's it. That's really interesting information to me. I, I, I don't want, I, I, Grace, I find you fascinating. I love how your mind works. I want to understand and connect on on up in the arena of of ideas as well as on the on Earth. And I hope some at some point we get to sit down across the table and have some wine and some dinner. Um, and I think that that this community is is a is is about all those things kind of at once, which makes it a bit confusing. I, I want to also just kind of one of the things is get a sense like one of the things is interesting to me is also maybe as individuals also how interested we are in doing um and that's not just doing it's also like we have different orientations around results so one of the things that happened on that private thread was kind of like what, what was what if we started doing more sense making here and putting this in some kind of a tool and labeling and tagging we're talking about that now again and and i i'm asking myself what if we looked at a, and tomorrow I'm having a, on the mapping call, I, I've gotten, Vincent put me in a slot that says I'm, why I'm never gonna use your map and nobody else will either. And, and you know, taking all of the maps saying, hey, we do wanna categorize and tag things. Has anybody made a really great tool who we could support instead of building our own? Or has anybody made a really great map? Or has it, you know, cause I pointed to this one um, really great sense making tool, which I think is completely underfunded, super interesting, way beyond anything I could possibly think of. And you know, what, what if part of our sense making was, or what if we did is, and I think this is probably one of the most qualified groups I've ever seen to say, hey, here's a whole, here's a bunch of, maybe not all of them, but all the tools that are for mind mapping the best one is Jerry's brain or whatever. This is the best one. We should all put our weight into there. Of course, then we'd have to do that. What does it mean weight? And does it mean fundraising? And does it mean joining? And does it mean what? But I feel like I would really trust this group to say, hey, we've looked at these hundred tools and this one is just outstanding. You know, why don't we throw our weight there rather than let's develop our own. And I don't know, maybe that's just my orientation. Matthew, anyway. Bill and I are doing that for what it's worth. Cool. That's super cool. And I'm muted. Um, and I can tell that there's a, another really interesting conversation we should come back to on this right now, but I'd like to get to Judy, Bentley, and Doug real quick. I think I'm still unmuted, right? Nope, we hear you now. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think we're on the edge of some really thoughtful and productive conversations in that there's a there is a difference between talking about and doing about that's significant and i'm uncertain for myself the effectiveness of trying to do in a large group versus the effectiveness of trying to do in smaller groups offline because i wouldn't want to lose not just the check-in but the thoughtful questioning and discussion that occurs in this conversation so it might be that we would want to map or somehow consider organizationally, how might we want this organization to evolve from one large call to some framework that meets diverse needs of diverse people in the call. It's clear that people who wanna work projects have figured out how to connect with each other and do that. Uh, but there are lots of other dimensions because that's, well, and I don't know the details of what you're doing in your projects, so I can't comment on them exactly, but I just think it would be really helpful to spend some time on large group, small group discussion and what it is that's unique in a large group that can't be done in smaller groups or it can be done in smaller groups, but then comes back for aggregation and divergence discussion and things like that. And I think there's a difference too in terms of action groups because action groups can be around evolving thought or they can be around taking action. And I'd like to discern those differences too. Um, thanks, Judy. 
really briefly, I know nothing about life sciences or how DNA uh, works, but I picture OGM kind of as a soup of DNA snippets that we're stirring around. And occasionally some of the snippets come together into something that's maybe a little viable life form and they float off and do something the way Pete was describing. And if we're lucky, they come back. But the soup is much larger than our little bowl. There's actually communities worldwide doing all this kind of work. And occasionally we're like, oh my God, we just tried to do X, but it's been done nicely over here. Let's go join their efforts and donate what we figured out to their efforts, et cetera, et cetera. And in this way, I think our little burbling pot can become a community of organisms and solve the different problems in different bite-sized ways. Um, and I'm unclear, Grace, to your question, I'm unclear that there's one tool to rule them all, but there might be one architecture that allows tools to play very nicely together so that when I add value to the community commons information layer uh, with my preferred tool, it's readable and useful and usable by, by other people using any other tool that's compliant to this architecture. And that's kind of where we're aiming, I think, philosophically. And it's really hard. And there's a couple individuals, this guy named Gordon Brander, who's creating the Noosphere Protocol. There's a few other people I've met who are busy inventing what could be these protocols and layers that allow a bunch of different tools to come in and play nicely together. Um, and that's just like a wicked problem at, at this point. It's a it's a it's a thorny big uh, big thing. Uh, Bentley Doug Doug, uh, Bentley Doug C Doug B. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, when Grace was talking, you um, s may have had a slightly different interpretation of sense doing than what I thought of it. Um, uh, so maybe we can also think about changing the name or clarifying that and and maybe i'm misunderstanding uh but it also initially there is a there's a valid point that i don't think since doing addresses which is how we conduct ourselves in this meeting to make it more open minded um and more global uh so that's that's a really good piece and then i think that that inspired the the since doing um uh which is tangential but doesn't actually address that issue except the people doing that may come back in the year with a slightly different attitude um which might help uh but for since doing the 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 term for me came up uh because we've had a lot of meta discussions about how to do sense making and sense doing is is us actually practicing and experimenting with those things so it is sense making um uh it's not actually taking action out in the world maybe <laughs> um so maybe that's an, a, a different interpretation of the term since doing and maybe we need to clarify that because it is it, it but but to probably your point it, it is kind of a, an abstract sense making outside of the um outside of this communication channel and and you are talking about sense making inside this um communication channel so feel free to correct me if i'm misinterpreting any of that um but i just thought it might be helpful to to clarify my interpretation and that maybe we need to clarify that um, better I'm not sure I'm understanding this, everything you said, but um, I agree with you that since doing is not a project to sort out the thing we've been talking about so far on this call here and that we need some parallel effort there. I don't know that they're mutually exclusive. I think they might actually no, be yeah. mutually, mutually helpful. If it helps, or synergistic. if it helps, a long time ago, I bought the domain openglobalheart.com uh, through Charles uh, Blass's sort of uh, Bass's uh, recommendations. And uh, that might be a, a way to think about it. I don't know. I don't know that it needs a project name or a, or a different website or anything like that. And then re real quick, we're, we're talking about tools and and uh, and I, I definitely agree in going out and finding the tools that are out there. And that's why I'm also kind of pushing back at choosing tools right now. I would rather get in and sit down and talk about what do we want to sense make on, pick some topics, how deep we want to go, build some context and then explore and see what tools are out there and, and which ones fit um, rather than choosing a tool or tools and then um, digging deep. Um, but that's my, that's my preference. And, and yeah, I, 
I prefer seeing what's out there, even though I, I well, okay, prefer is wrong way. I realize the, <laughs> the better way than the way I've been doing it for the last 30 years is to go and see what people have been doing out there rather than inventing it myself. But I have to continuously fight that um, urge. I think sometimes our efforts to invent things ourselves, and I'm not a coder, but many of us in the room are, are what cause the insights that make us appreciate what somebody else built already and then go help them or invent some little piece that solves something that they didn't solve, whatever. But so, so I don't want to ever discourage us from, from tinkering because the tools are so powerful now and just getting more powerful all the time. So I think together we're going to maybe even accidentally start to figure out what all these little slices are and how they fit together. And that, that's the thing I'm trying to encourage. Uh, Doug C. Well, I... <laughs> I wish I had something smart to say here. Uh, I find I have almost no idea what sense doing would actually look like for this group. Uh, I feel like we're treading water in the middle of a, a fast moving river. And that's not a good thing to be doing. Uh, for me, the world is falling apart quickly, uh, more quickly it looks like today than it did yesterday. And we're not talking about it. And I don't know whether I'm in a minority of one and thinking that that's where we ought to go uh, or whether I'm part of a majority here. I just have no idea. Um, thanks, Doug. And I'm wondering how to get a sense of the room on that. I know that I'm incredibly furious personally, although I do a good job of masking furious, um, that we are busy trying to keep the United States from becoming the handmaid's tale when in fact we're facing a series of existential crises that really would benefit from our collaboration. So, so I'm extremely anxious that we're not actually solving any of the problems together and that our political sphere seems to be in a Mexican standoff that seems almost impossible to get rid of. Money pouring into these campaigns means we are finally split on a 1% difference sort of worldwide, weirdly. This is happening all over the place. <clears throat> and that's going to be the, uh, you know, there's a way of looking at that that spells the end of humanity coming reasonably soon because these are extinction level events that we're, that we're busy talking about that are already in motion and happening. And, and that, by the way, is a point of view that could be picked apart and, and contrasted with other points of view that, hey, everything's actually all right and technology is going to solve it. And I'm really interested in how that looks. And I'm really interested in the storytelling that Doug, you would do and any of the rest of us would do around that and rooting that story in the facts and evidence and points of view. And what that, what that looks like in sort of a multi-layered uh, vision is partly why I'm here uh, trying to stir the pot hard. Uh, Doug B. You're muted. Um, so, I actually have an idea of how to get a sense of the room, Jerry, if you want to do that. I would love that. What you do is you say, how do people feel about whatever it is, the urgency of the problem, and then this is a lot and this is a little, and just whatever it is you want to get a sense of the room about, just say, how do so you feel just, about this, a lot, a little, like, is this, yeah. So it, just use your hand right, like, in your square, in your rectangle. Yeah, and then you can look at the it's, whole room together. And so whatever it is that I, I totally resonate with, you know, who resonates with Doug said like, oh my God, the world is getting worse and worse, faster and faster, you know, like, and then whatever it is, you can. Why don't we um, a, a, just great, use uh, hand signals? Why don't we ask that question right this moment? Who resonates with what Doug just said? Uh, please put your hand in your square uh, where where you think it falls. Um, I. I want a value that's, I, you know, I, I don't want to participate in that vote. You could do like a fist, which is like the opt out. <laughs> <laughs> you could do like the, the finger, which is the opt out. That's the nasty opt out though, Gil. I think having a, a, bi a binary that the world is falling apart isn't the right thing to vote on. But it, yes. it wasn't binary. It's like, hey, we're sitting here dithering while the world is falling apart. Is that a binary? Seems like a yes or no question. Um, uh, well, the this, question this is, is a great yes scale, no. right? This is a scale. Yeah. What's what's the what's the purpose of the vote? Um, Doug was like, I can't even tell in this crowd if people feel as urgently as I do that we're facing like ex existential crises and we're sitting here. We've, all, we've always handled that by this or plus. Oh. We need another mechanism. Yeah. 
Well, we are, but it may not make any difference. <laughs> you know, a little bit of Alfred E. Newman. You know, it's the it's the umpteenth uh, cyclical uh, uh, species extinction. I I come here Next. to be in community with my with my peers um, and with my friends. And this call, interestingly enough, Mark Mark said, uh, Mark Ranza said, I I come to these calls. I wish I just could just get some homework to take home and do for a week. I get my homework in other calls, which you could call OGM calls. Um, I, I would love this call if we were just friends with each other and hung out. So I'm not saying one or, one or the other is right or wrong or whatever, but we have a, a variety of reasons to be here and a variety of reasons to vote or not on whether the world is going to hell in a handbasket. It is, obviously. But a very big hand. That's not what I want to talk about here. Um, Doug B, we stole the microphone from you there briefly. Um, I'm passing it back. And and I'm unmuted. So um, it's also good. So just just on what just happened, I I'm sort of with Pete. I I'm not interested in feeding the dark hole, and that's how I experience that. Um, so I'm I'm gonna throw an additional dimension onto the pile um, because I'm living in the not the meta but more the proto domain of how do we do us differently and that can be how do we talk to each other how do we co-create together all of that stuff as living beings which is really, really complicated and really foundationally precedes its, like precedes projects and doing and tools and all of this other stuff that has to do with doing. But before you even get to doing, there's like some really deep foundational things that need to be present in order for anything to manifest. And those are things operating energetically. They're operating not in noun land, but in sort of verb being land by and between a group of people that come together to co-create. And um, I'm going to invoke some elemental references, but um, if there's a group of people looking to create something, there really needs at some point to be a alignment by and between on the way in which people are going to relate to each other, treat each other, um, and engage before you even define what the it is they're engaging around. And if that isn't handled, and if that isn't like arrived at collectively as a function of individual getting to know other individuals and coming to some kind of uh, individual subscription to a collective set of common things, held, things held in common on a values level, um, really, really tough to have something manifest out the back end at the end of the day. On the other side of the, if that's one bookend, the other, side of the bookshelf, um, there needs to be some collective expression of individual agreement to a common purpose. Like we're doing X in service to bringing Y to the world. And if different people have different ideas about either what the it is, they're giving birth to, who are the beneficiaries of the it that they're giving birth to it for, and the higher purpose that that's contributing to the greater grandeur, then it's almost impossible to get to manifestation of something. Doug, it seems to me like what you're asking for is very unlikely to happen, but something will happen. So I'd like to explore that. Okay. Well, before we go there, before we go there, because um, 
I don't, there are ways people hear what I just said, and I want to make sure that's not going on. So this is not about everybody has to agree to one thing. That's number one. It's not about unanimity, but for a group of people collectively engaged in co-creating something, there needs to be a couple of agreements, foundational agreements, that everybody's pulling in the same direction and it is gonna relate to the endeavor and each other and the way they go about creating with a very small set of common values and orientations. I don't even wanna invoke rules because that's hardening up in a way that I'm not really talking about on a felt sense level. So I raised, at one point earlier in OGM, I raised the question like, what is the purpose? I don't believe there is one defined for OGM and part of the, the wash and the chaos and the, the frothy red ocean of projects and things and cross currents and all that stuff is a reflection that OGM as a baby that was created by whoever here at its inception didn't define a purpose, didn't set or express, publish, make manifest a purpose for what this is. And what happens here to me is a reflection of that lack. And I don't mean lack from a judgmental place. <laughs> I also want to counteract internal reactivities. It's not a judgment lack. It's just not, there isn't a defined purpose that I've seen or found. Um, so everything I said applies fractally. So you get down to smaller groups of people working together around an it. If they have the ingredients, they make progress, they manifest something. The bigger a group gets, the more foundational these two bookends are needed. And if they're not there, it's the odds of a larger group of people manifesting something, bringing something into, birthing something into the world in concrete framer terms, whatever the it is, um, diminishes in direct proportion. <laughs> and with that, I'll, I'm complete. Um, thanks, Doug. And I feel like there's been a sort of mission statement on the web since day one, which is OGM is trying to create a shared memory so humans might make better decisions together. And it's a little bit more complicated than that because it has to do with heart, not just mind, but there's something like that. Um, so I'm not, I'm unclear that we haven't had some sort of rallying statement that was why people sort of nosed around and started checking into the group and seeing if they liked it. Um, so I've got a bunch of people. Uh, Kevin, you fell out of the list, but you were right after Mark Carranza. So let me go Mark C, Kevin, Matthew, Judy. <coughs> thank you, Doug. And um, thank you, Jerry. I was going to basically make the same request that Kevin goes after um, my little comment. Um, I find it hard to do homework. I'm a very busy person. And at the same time, Productive meetings usually end up with action steps. Now, there are different kinds of meetings, um, but Mark, you know, your, I, your, Mark, your audio is kind of clicky and unclear. I'm not quite sure what you're talking to us through. Yeah, I have. Um, is it still bad? It's getting digital artifacts some, from somewhere. Well, then, uh, we, we can understand what you're saying, so you you can keep going. It's just that it's uh, it's a little. I'm having to filter audio artifacts. Sure. Mm. We can hear you. Okay. Um, anyway, my homework, which I haven't done um, most of the time, is to try to reach out personally to Judy, Doug, Klaus, and I have failed completely in terms of doing that once a week to one of the participants and saying, hey, let's spend an hour talking. Um, I've done that with Ken Homer. Um, and we have a beautiful friendship and I haven't talked to him in weeks. Um, it's just, um, 
how do I hopefully earn a living? <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm I'm struggling with poverty, uh, and uh, and certainly that has an effect on time um, and how I feel free to you know give my time to something that isn't uh, you know paying the rent. Um, and well, you know, it is a concern that um, may not be shared by most of the people in this group. Um, you know, uh, luck is a is a big thing when it comes to uh, having been able to put money away um, in savings and having to spend it when one doesn't have money. The invitation is, hey, please spam me. I would like to connect with you and I haven't been able to. Um, you, you all, all you all. Um, and, uh, and that's my homework. And we might have different kinds of you know, homework, but the idea of even breakout groups during some of these calls where there's a smaller focus. Hey, who wants to focus on mind tools? Who wants to focus on existential stuff? I censored myself. But, um, uh, you know, what I loved about Kiko Lab was their sense of play with the group. They had different moderators. They'd shift from men to women. They'd have uh, invited folks. Now, we don't all have to be one way, but I'm, I'm looking for a little more variety, you know, to break up the usual suspects here. Um, and hopefully um, that might be shared. And if it's not shared, that's perfectly fine too. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, please, Kevin, I'd love to hear. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, let's go, Kevin, Judy, Klaus. Yeah, I thought we had a project to do and something to do some sense making around with the COVID thing, and that made sense. I'm what Temple Grandin would call a bottom-up thinker, as is she, and so when it gets into concepts, I really can't process those. I can do pattern recognition better than about anybody and assemble a mosaic, and I can't understand when you go there, but I thought we had a thing to work on, and that... Uh, when you go up there, I, I, you know, it's, I, I, I will try to maintain until it gets back to something away from abstract concept, concepts of what we could do or be. So anyway, I thought we had something to work on. And uh, not many Kevin, people actually care about the content of the COVID conversation. Um, and well, I, it, we've, we've gotten much more juice about what... You know, when we take little sides, sides, I don't, I don't mean that. Um, when we start talking about COVID, how do we talk about it? And that's where the juice of the conversation has actually gone. I don't agree. <clears throat> I think it's been the juice of the conversation is how to talk about COVID. It's the how and the thing. And, it, and when you get to into the how, you get to just, you know, hand jive at the meta level, you know, which is nothing wrong with hand jive at the meta level if you have the could right you kind want, of digital could you avatar. Un, could you unpack hand jive at the meta level for me? I'm unclear. That well, it, 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 it's, it, it's circular going nowhere. Uh, onanistic uh, philosophy. Ah, I like that very much. Like, I think I'm going to add that as a whole new branch of philosophy in my, in my brain. You know, you could be the guru of onanistic philosophy, Jerry. I'm not, I'm not clear. I want that on my tombstone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. with that one. There's a lot of tchotchkes you could sell. Uh, that's true. The merch, the merch potential is huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Judy then Klaus. Okay. Well, I wanted to comment. First of all, I like that we went to the two, the alternating week structure of a topic versus our general call. I would hate to lose the check-in call because I think the richness of the topics in the room as each person expresses what they're doing is intense. But we might mine that somehow at the wrap up section of the call and look for additional topics to add so that we could 
take another meeting outside the main meeting or introduce it as a partner in the sequence to we're going to do something different every week. We're going to do check-in calls once a month. We're going to do this the next week. We're going to do this the third, this the fourth. I'm not sure what the right infrastructure is, but I think it would be, I would welcome the opportunity to go into more depth on subsets of our general discussion with any number of people in the room. And I think finding a way to do that um, is different than, than saying we're going to do something about X, which means we're going to generate a work product that takes us in yet another direction. And I think there's two types of breakout that we might want to consider. Um, there might be seven types of breakout, but anyway, that's my thought. Yeah. And, and Can Judy, you talk I, on those two types, Judy? Um, I'm, uh, I'm not well, sure I, I got the, them clear. The projects, that, the, the projects that have broken out so far are around doing something largely with technology, but not exclusively. They're like, how do we put the tires under the car to make this work in an adaptive internet environment? And I think that's really important. And those groups are doing a great job doing what they wanna do. But what we're not doing is taking the rich content of this call and saying, we need to dive into topic X with a subgroup of people who are really passionate about topic X bring that back to the whole group for reflection and and sort of expand our shared consciousness in different realms and i don't know if that's workable it sounds kind of messy but that's that would be my dream so um judy you and mark have just talked about sort of uh, spawning small sub conversations and what pete was describing earlier i think is that the some some of those little sub conversations and sub projects are just happening organically because somebody says, hey, let's go start a call. And then that call just sort of builds a little bit and keeps going. And there's a bunch of little um, calls mingled across the OGN and other communities that are happening. And some of them are actually like ha very happily sort of uh, beavering away at some thing that they're going to build and bring back and a shiny object they'll show to the group, which might fit into the larger puzzle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and we've tried to get people over to the Mattermost channels to actually have a lot of these conversations because on Mattermost, we have channels that have topics and you can actually go deep on the topic and you can find other people who are like-minded, but man, it's hard to get all of us over into Mattermost to, to do that. And I would not discourage at any moment, anybody saying, hey, anybody, you know, put on the OGM list, I'm really fascinated by this topic. Please come join me in my Zoom at this hour and see who shows up. And if, they, if people show up and that turns into something, go crazy and keep doing that. Um, I think it's, it's, it's practically and uh, exponentially explosive to try to slow down and go in, inspect everything that we say that's of interest that I think all of our brains explode at the, at, the, at the prospect of that. And one of the cool things about any OGM check-in call is that we, I, for me, we generate a whole bunch of things I need to go track down and add to my brain and think about and, 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 and so forth. I love that. I mean, that, that's sort of just like uh, meat and potatoes for me or whatever the right analogy is. Um, so, so, the, so Judy, I think some of what you're looking for is actually happening and some of it we need to encourage more of just organically to see, uh, to see what's up. Uh, but also, I, I think that, that our Mattermost server is a really nice place for, for some of this to happen. Uh, Mr. Mager. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I want to... To, to, to step back for a moment and, and what I have been able to get out of our conversations here. And I must say the, the richest experience besides you know, all the wonderful support I got from Jerry and, and Pete and others to, to learn how to organize uh, the, um, workshops and, and webinars and so on, which uh, you know, has been really helping me a great deal to, to get to where I'm at today. But the richest experience was uh, the book discussion on the dawn of everything, you know, and it kept elevating my my thoughts into what I'm in right now. Spinning you know, out of that discussion is a discussion on free will. You know, is nature deterministic? You know, who who are we really as a species? What is our function? You know, how do we engage in decision making collectively? that can secure our collective future because we are as a species threatened right now for our very survival, right? And, and I think everyone in this group is clear about this, but 
the, the, the threat has a far greater immediacy. And I think this is what Doug was also referring to. Um, then we are willing to cope and deal with, right? So, so the challenge is to develop consensus around a hierarchical structure of nature. You know, not everything is of equal importance. Not everything is equally right. Now, so we know, for example, now that gravity is a thing. You now, and 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 you can't. Uh, uh, you can't fly an airplane you know, until you understand certain uh, uh, rules of nature. So there's a lot of stuff going on where we assume you know, de de a deterministic nature of, uh, uh, of, of our decision making, and then we assume free will. But then you hear Einstein and others saying there is no such thing as free will. Is it super deterministic? So what does that mean? I think those are questions that are deeply relevant you know, to, to the way we understand our own reality. And the, 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 the biggest challenge that I see, you know, and, and I, I run into this every single day in every conversation, is we all live in silos, right? Because our life experience, our education, our background, and so on, means that we are looking at reality from within the silo that we are that we are by default stuck in. So the challenge then is to climb out of that silo for a moment, look around and see how we're connecting to everything else. And the, 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 the biggest problem you know, that we see right now, I mean, I see a guy like Bill Gates, for example, uh, wanting to make decisions that he thinks are in the best uh, uh, nature in the best possible way to make a contribution, but in the process create more damage and, and more, more chaos without knowing that is because he's stuck in this silo perspective, not understanding other stakeholders and other uh, the, and, and, and what we call externalities that are being impacted. So that's what I, what I think is the systems nature of our, of our existence. You know, to 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 link to link us you know from a systems perspective and that's when we are flying as a group you know when we when we step back and look at this that's when we start flying and when we get stuck into um um you know covid is you know so it's certainly a, a super important issue but in the scheme of things right it's a sideshow and, and so so that's that's where i think um uh, not wanting to solve a big a big project or anything but simply solve uh, a a mutual understanding and and, and a per perception perspective of reality because i honestly i'm honestly where duck is i mean i think we are running into a wall and and it's coming up much much faster and harder than than we're prepared for um at least we're having a good time in the limo <laughs> just kidding um it feels sometimes like that's sort of what's happening is that is that we're going there um we're close to the end of our normal 90 minute call time we did no real project work on sense doing which attracted a bunch of people to the call who might not normally have come in i kind of want to apologize for that um actually no i don't kind of want to apologize i do want to apologize for that and um I think that the conversation we just had was necessary, but I don't know that we need to keep having the meta conversation and avoid some sense doing. Um, so I, my instinct here is to create a pop-up sense doing call separate from next Thursday's OGM call, which is, you know, in, the, in our normal sequence, probably should be a check-in call, given that we've expressed our desire to have those and that the last couple calls have been topic calls uh, by, by sort of de facto. Um, and then I want to add something, which is, um, I don't know that I say this out loud very, very, very much, but Open Global Mind, and I mentioned having bought Open Global Heart, but I, whenever I explain OGM to anybody, I say, hey, it sort of has two halves. The, the, for me, conceptually, the lower half is the geeky heart, the, the geeky brain mind part about that's, that's expressed well in Open Global Mind, especially as a global brain. And it has to do with protocols and visualizations and logic and rhetoric and uh, arguments and argumentation theory and all that good stuff. The upper side has nothing to do with all the geeky stuff. It has to do with heart and it has to do with vulnerability, safety, 
uh, community, a trust, uh, all the kinds of things that that if 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 there's no heart present, there's no reason to address the logic or the arguments, and there's nobody nobody going to talk to you if they don't trust you some way to have that conversation in some sense, and and I think we underplay under we we don't dive very much into the heart part of this, even though it's clearly evident in our conversations that. We're, we're building some heart between us, but we also have some heart deficits, some heart, we're not listening wholeheartedly um, uh, enough in some senses, which is maybe where Grace started us on the conversation uh, in this call. <clears throat> and we need to like spend more time on that. And I know that there's a bunch of people who are professional, uh, people like Nancy White, who um, lurks at the periphery of OGM because she thinks we're on something interesting, but we're really not dealing with the stuff that she cares about, which I think is more in this upper upper container. Um, and I think we ignore the upper part explicitly, maybe at our peril. I'm not sure. I don't know. But I want to draw more attention to it because for me, there's like heart and mind or brain are complementary. They're not opposites, they don't disintegrate together, they're necessary together in order for this thing to actually move forward. Um, and so um, Ken has tried really hard to get us out of conversation mode and thinking mode into feeling mode and exercises and grounding and breathing and being present together. That's a piece of this, this upper layer as well. Uh, just, le just learning how to be more present together. And unfortunately, we were all thrown into Zoom at the start of pandemic, which made OGM kind of possible, but also has us all living in these little rectangles, uh, showing up several times a week into these calls that are not physical prana presence with each other, where we're, and we don't live, many of us, near each other anymore, um, although many of us once did. Ken? You're muted. Oh, there you go. I wanted to take us out with a poem if, uh, if it's timely to do so. That sounds very lovely to me. This poem has to do with um, seeing. It's called Monet Refuses the Operation by Liesl Muller. Doctor, you say there are no halos around the streetlights in Paris. And what I see is an aberration caused by old age, an affliction. I tell you, it has taken me all my life to arrive at the vision of gas lamps as angels to soften and blur and finally banish the edges you regret that I don't see. To learn the line that I called horizon does not exist and sky and water so long apart are the same state of being. 54 years before I could see Ruan Cathedral is built of parallel shafts of sun. And now you want to restore my youthful errors? fixed notions of top and bottom, the illusion of three-dimensional space, wisteria separate from the bridge it covers. What can I say to convince you that the houses of parliament dissolve night after night to become the fluid dream of the Thames? I will not return to a universe of objects that don't know each other as if islands were not the lost children of one great continent. The world is flux, and light becomes what it touches, becomes water, lilies on water, above and below water, becomes lilac and mauve and yellow and white and curulin lamps, small fists passing sunlight so quickly to one another that it would take long streaming hair inside my brush to catch it. To paint the speed of light, our weighted shapes, these verticals burn to mix with air and change our bones, skin, clothes to gases. Doctor, if only you could see how heaven pulls earth into its arms and how infinitely the heart expands to claim this world, blue vapor without end. Ciao, y'all. Thank you, Ken. I'm going to stay here in silence for a little while and see you all next week and then the intermediate calls.
Thanks, everyone. Good week.